Log on, tune in, find out. Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. Some parts of the ice sheet have speeded up very greatly in the last decade. Every time we look, something new is on the change, and, and that is scary. My name's Julian Dowdswell. I study glaciers and ice sheets. When I started doing this 25 years ago, my family thought, when is this chap gonna get a real job? But now they think what I do is really quite important. Glaciers and ice sheets are melting with consequences for communities all around the world. As a glaciologist, I need to go to the Arctic to see how ice sheets are changing. And it's necessary to make measurements of just how fast these changes are taking place. I'm going north to do that on the island of Greenland. Greenland's a huge continent covered by ice, about the same size as Mexico. It's very beautiful, very wild, and from a scientist's point of view, very interesting. Things are changing rapidly here because the Arctic is the most sensitive part of the global climate system. And over the coming century, temperatures here are likely to rise at double the global average. Although it's sometimes really uncomfortable, it's important I'm on a ship. It means I can get right up close to the glacier margins where the ice is actually being transferred from the ice sheet to the ocean. I'm here to measure the speed of the glaciers and the number of icebergs that flow from them into the ocean. Curiously, ice although it's a solid, flows at considerable speed. The glaciers in Greenland are the fastest flowing anywhere in the world. So we've just got these images back of Greenland. And so these are actually flow lines yep. through the glacier, or yep. ice down the glacier. This, this, this is a good example here. You can really see very nicely. I'm finding that some parts of the ice sheet have doubled in speed, up to about 10 kilometres per year. That means that the contribution of Greenland to global sea level change is a particularly important one. But Greenland's only part of the icy world. There are many other places where things are changing as well. And just six weeks after coming back from the north, I'm off to the south to look at some of the least known places in the world. Antarctica, it's a huge continent with a huge ice sheet sitting on the top of it. In fact, it's bigger than the whole of Europe. If all the ice on Greenland were to melt, global sea level would rise by about seven meters. But in Antarctica, it would be 70 meters. I'm here doing something different to Greenland. The Antarctic is so little known, we don't even know in many places the thickness of the ice. So using radar systems which were pioneered in Cambridge. I'm measuring the thickness of the ice sheet and its changing volume. Radar antenna are fixed underneath the wings of an aircraft and then a grid of flight lines is flown over the ice sheet. On the radar records, I can see subglacial mountains hidden beneath the ice that we didn't know were there before. But there's more than that there. 
I'm finding that the ice is two or three kilometres in thickness. It's changes in the volume of the ice sheet that will affect global sea level. I'm finding glacier and ice sheet change is a reality at both poles. The ice, it's thinning and it's retreating, and that means water is flowing back into the global ocean. Today, sea level is rising at about three millimetres per year. Over the coming century, sea level is likely to rise by about one metre. And it's actually that rise with the worst storm waves that you can imagine. And in those circumstances, sea defences can be breached and low-lying areas of the world, such as Bangladesh, can be flooded. And that has serious implications for humankind. As a scientist, my role is to go to the polar regions and continue to make measurements of the icy world and how it's changing. But those numbers are not just sciencey numbers, they actually matter to everyone.